everybody, Jeff, your executive garden here. Happy Labor Day to everybody that lives in the United States and everybody that has a job and works and contributes to your economy around the world. So uh, if you live in Houston, Texas, like I do, or any part of the uh, southern United States, you know what time it is again. Fall means tomato time. So I'm going to show you what I'm doing, what I'm growing from a tomato perspective. And I get a lot of questions from my viewers about um, some of my other tomato videos. Can you talk ab about, again, how you prepare your tomato pots for maximum flowering and fruit and so forth? So this episode, I will, I'm going to show you kind of what, I'm, what I do uh, to prepare my pots, because I think I'm going mostly container gardening in the fall. And as you most, most of you know that watched my channel before, um, we can grow tomatoes pretty much all year long except for the summer which is just the opposite for the folks that live in the north, like Chicago and so forth. So we can grow it in the fall with a greenhouse, you can grow it in the winter, and certainly in the spring, but in summer, it just gets too darn hot. So it's September 3rd here in Houston, Texas, and in the day it's about 90, but it's actually starting to get down to 76 degrees at night, which means if you've seen my previous videos, for the flowers to go to fruit, you really need temperature between 70 and 75 degrees. So let me show you um, a little bit about what I'm growing here from a tomato perspective. And uh, again, this is a prepper to show you what I use to maximize uh, tomato growth. So let's get started. So um, I usually like, if you watch my last episode, I usually grow most things from seedlings, excuse me, seeds and seed, uh, I grow seedlings indoors. So two of my favorite tomatoes, I have a dwarf Arctic re uh, rose and a black semen and you'll take a look at these uh, unfortunately they've got a ways to go okay so they're growing inside they're making great progress they're under the lights inside but we've got a ways to go so I don't want to wait that long and I got a little bit late start so what I went to went, what, what I did was I went to uh, depot today and I bought um, two um, two plants to keep me uh, filled with tomatoes in my salads and sandwiches until those grow so I got the Super Sweet 100 Cherry, and I got a Somerset Heat Tolerant. Never tried that before. It's a hybrid tomato, but what the heck, give it a try. So these are the two that I'm going to grow, and what I'm growing them in is two fabric pots. Uh, I usually use fabric pots when I do container gardening. I've talked about this before. Uh, There's something called air pruning. You can watch other videos on how air pruning works, but essentially your roots grow out to the sides, the fabric breathes, and air gets to your roots and it creates a much more plush healthier plant uh, from what I've seen so far but each of these are three gallon uh, fabric, fabric pots uh, that I uh, think I purchased online and I've got some seven gallon ones and some five gallon ones let me talk about what I'm gonna do so to start with I'm gonna use a standard quality potting mix that I picked up from a local garden center in addition to that, I'm going to show you, in addition to the potting mix, which most of you use, I like to supercharge my soil, okay? And there's some key ingredients that are essential, as we've talked about before, not just the N, the P, and the K, but some other things to prevent some issues uh, that you've had before that, that people have growing tomatoes, especially in containers, not in soil, in the garden, but in containers. So uh, let me show you the products I use, again, in addition to a, a standard potting mix. So... I'm going to go through this relatively quickly. So, I do use fish bone meal. I add a good amount of fish bone meal. Everything that I'm going to share with you here is organic. So, fish bone meal uh, is a great source of uh, phosphorus. Phosphorus leads to a lot of flowers, which leads to a lot of uh, uh, a lot of fruit. Okay. Secondly, I use calcium nitrate. Okay. If you'll see the picture on this bag here, that's a tomato with end rot. Okay. You need calcium. Uh, in your soil, uh, especially if you're using container pots because it rains a lot, the calcium leaches out the bottom and you end up getting uh, 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 blossom end rot, which is what you saw in this picture here. Same with peppers, you need to not forget about calcium, so I use that as well. I also use an organic blood meal, okay, uh, that I get at the store. I put a good amount in, in the container and I don't see uh, any situation in any of these that I use that you can ever use too much. But be careful, especially between the nitrogen source, which is the, the blood meal. Um, uh, you can use too much, and you've seen from a previous episode, you can get all big green leaves and no flowers. So make sure 
that you put a fair amount. So if you're using a uh, two tablespoons of uh, phosphorus, use an equivalent two tablespoons of bone meal. Don't put too much of this in. In addition, the most overlooked nutrient, I did a video on this, is Epsom salt, okay, magnesium sulfate. Uh, mix it into your soil. It'll keep your plants healthy. It'll keep the uh, leaves lush and green, okay? Uh, in addition to this, in here I have worm castings. So um, I feed my worms a ton of bananas, banana peels, bananas, and, um, and you'll see some in there. Uh, and they return castings to me. Uh, potassium, other nutrients, and uh, microorganisms that are in the casting, I mix this into the soil as well to build up my plant's nutrition and defenses. And lastly, I have a general, uh, I got this uh, trifecta uh, from my friend Luke. It's a 5-10-4 uh, um, organic gardening mix uh, with beneficial uh, uh, micronutrients and bacteria and fungi. So uh, Luke, um, who's the MI gardener, thanks, will give us a try. And here's what I want. So I look at the plants here and they say that it takes 75 days, or excuse me, 65 days to get fruit. I want to rush that. I want to move it up to 50 days. I don't want to wait that long. So I'm going to supercharge my plant with all those nutrients, with quality potting mix. And I'll give you a look in a few weeks from now, I'll let you know how it goes. But again, I believe in kind of succession planting. So it'll take a while for those small seedlings I saw, the seeds I just started, to start to bear fruit. Because in Texas, I will continue to grow tomatoes through February of next year in my greenhouse. So I want to have them all fall and all winter. So I got to get started. I'm a little bit late. So I'll start with these seedlings. Let me um, put the plants in the root pouches, excuse me, in the fabric pot pouches, uh, get it all made, and I'll come back and show you what it looks like. Hey, I'm back. So I potted uh, this plant up in this root pouch, this fabric root pouch, three gallon root pouch. And uh, the purpose of this episode, again, is to show you how I do it to super boost tomato production. I gave you all the ingredients up front. If you have any questions, let me know. Uh, one of the other things I want to talk about, and you'll see it's potted all the way to the top, is when you put these in these fabric pots, make sure you put enough soil because when it does get wet, the soil will sink, okay? And the other thing too, as you mostly know, because the tomatoes in the nightshade family, you can plant uh, the stem a little bit deeper uh, to, uh, uh, for a healthier plant. And I have, I planted about two inches uh, into the stem. Um, so you can do that and it will grow roots off of that. And the last thing I wanted to say is just make sure, as you'll see with the bottom of my plant here, you trim off any branches that could touch the soil. That'll prevent disease and so forth. So this is my plant. Like I said, it takes 60 days for this after planted to grow fruit. I hope to charge this thing up to 40 days with all the nutrients that I put into it. So again, it's 90 some degrees here in Houston still. We get 75 at night, which is pretty good. It's starting to become tomato time in the southern part of the United States. So um, while all of you folks up in the north have enjoyed a great July and June and August uh, tomato production, we have suffered in Houston. So uh, that's what I have. Hope everybody has a great Labor Day. And if you live in the south, see if you can follow my formula here. And you can have tomatoes as well all throughout the winter, the fall, and early spring. Have a good one. Take care. Bye.